Yeah, really good morning. Good morning. It is 16 minutes after 7 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in to The Source, WOCA, this third day of the second month of 2014. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Larry. Happy as you over there. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Big, big day yesterday. A lot of people had their TV tuned to the same exact thing. <laughs> yes, they did. A lot of people watching the exact same thing as each other. Yeah. A lot of people talking about what they watched last night. Yeah. <laughs> All kind of stuff happening, Robin. Exactly. All right. Uh, thank you for tuning in. It's Monday, so it's a good morning, but we take away a point. Unless you're on vacation, then don't, then go ahead and keep the point. But we, we take away that point so we can use it on a Friday when we need the extra point on Friday. Yeah. Don't have don't have that whole thing started. Uh, uh, you're so good. It just, it just works out that way, I guess. 7.30 this morning, we will begin. Well, we really don't. We bring we begin right now, really. Yes, we do. Uh, but the first feature <laughs> of the morning, I should say, is at 7.30. It is called Bring Back the Bible. It's a two-minute feature, and it is brought to you by Pastor Walter B. Smith from the Heritage Baptist Church. I was looking forward to hearing what he's kind of saying. 7.35, I guess we'll just kind of talk about that TV thing that happened last night. Okay. I know you were watching it. and uh, Between naps. I'm sure everybody <laughs> else was watching it. Uh, the, the Nielsen ratings people were looking at their thing and they said, what's up with that Whitler guy? He's not. He doesn't have it on. <laughs> Somebody send a drone over to his house and... Uh, See if you can figure out why he's not watching the Super Bowl. What is up with this guy? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, 8.35 this morning, News Bites. This is where we take the news from around the world, around the nation, around the state, and we deliver it to you bite size. Mm-hmm. Nothing better than a good news morning. And uh, I know all the news isn't good, but, you know, the Super Bowl is a good news story. Yes. You know, it's a, it's a happy ending. and Well, I guess if... Except unless you're rooting for the Broncos, then it wasn't happy anything. But no. But otherwise, I mean, it was a good. It was a good. It's yeah. From a news point of view, it's good news. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nine oh five. Susan Klaus is coming on. She breeds and races thoroughbred horses, so she can talk to us about what we do right here in this town. Exactly. She's written a book called Secretariat Reborn. It's a novel, uh, but she also wants to talk about horse cloning. Yep. Horse cloning. Mm-hmm. Is it possible to clone a horse? Why not? That's you know, right. The horse, you can clone anything, can't you? That's right. <laughs> anyway, she'll be doing a book signing event on the 9th, and it will be at the Hits event over at the, uh, where, where is Hits? Post Time Farm. Post Time Farm. Yep. 13710 U.S. Highway 27. Wow, you got it memorized. Wow. No, it's right there. Oh, you got it in front of you. Okay. I, I wrote it down in front of you. 935 <laughs> in the studio. Lauren Chapin is coming into the studio. You know this lady. She is an actress, and she's been on Father Knows Best. She was the character known as Kitten. Yep. She was awarded five junior Emmys for Best Child Actress, honorary mayor of three cities in Texas, Oklahoma, and Florida. Yeah. I wonder if Ocala is one of them. Wait a minute! Is it? Uh-huh. Is, didn't I tell her we need? Didn't didn't I tell her we? You told the mayor. Who did I tell her that we needed to do this? Yeah, you but told, I told the mayor we needed to. do You this? told the mayor, and he so, went to St. John Lutheran <laughs> School when the um, oh, right. best production oh, that's was right. on last year, and that's he right. gave her a key to the city. <laughs> no, See, he? you got the town wired. I got. I got. You let the mayor know. It was, it was, she was a coincidence. No, he happened to be here. I think <laughs> I can't remember the circumstances. No, now. we called him on the phone. But anyway, oh, thank you for reminding me. Yes. See, I forget everything. If it was a few, there'd be no memoir ever written about us. <laughs> Lauren Chapin. Uh, so anyway, she's coming in into the studio. How exciting is that? That's really uh, exciting. Another pretty lady joining her, Kim Sandstrom. She's been on with us before. Beautiful lady. Mm-hmm. And she's the founder of the Celebration Dinner Theater. Yep. And uh, so she's coming in to talk to us about what Lauren Chapin is doing with her and with them. So yep. always fun to talk to Kim. She's playing the mom. In Barefoot in the Park. So Lauren is? Fun, yeah, that's a fun role. Is Kim in it as well? She's the founder of the Dinner Theater, so she's probably the director. She's pretty enough. I she's imagine. an actress, though, isn't she? I think so, yeah. Uh, pretty enough. I don't know why I say it that way. <laughs> you could be homely and be a, an actor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's true for actresses. All right, auto repair with personal care. Matt Gibbs will be in at ten oh five. He's the owner of Sunrise Automotive, so he'll be talking about your cars. Yep. Uh, Greg Thompson, another very talented, good-looking guy. He is uh, also an actor and a director and a choreographer and everything else, and he's responsible for the play you've been hearing about coming to our town, Do Black Patent Leather Shoes Really Reflect Up? And he's coming in with Melody Murphy, who is the marketing director of the Ocala Civic Theater. Have I met Melody? I don't know. You've met Melody, right? Just on the phone. Just on the phone? Yeah. 
So That's I don't, all. I've, so, I've just so, known her on the So phone. she might be somebody new for us anyway. Yeah. Maybe a lot of people in town know her. But anyway, they, they will be in to talk about the Ocala Civic Theater musical stage production of Do Black Patent Leather Shoes Really Reflect? Up oh, Somewhere I have my notes, and I have one of the, a couple of songs... We use some of their songs on Fun okay. with Joe. I got to <laughs> yeah. find my notes so I know which one because I always encode them so you guys can't look over my shoulder and cheat. That's right. Dr. Oh, Joan. Oh, oh, and one more thing what about is, Greg Thompson. Yeah, what visit. is it? They're bringing in a few of the cast members. Don't know who they are, but we were promised one of the roller skating nuns. Oh, really? She was supposed to bring her roller skate, so we'll see. We're getting a roller skating nun? Uh, we're supposed to. Really? We'll see, but we don't know their names, so. You know, I have something in common with her. <laughs> what is that? Ask me how much roller skating I do. How much do you do? None. <laughs> Dr. Joan A. Friedman is coming on 1105. Dr. Friedman is a twin, is the mother of twins, Yep. and is a psychotherapist specializing in twin issues. Yeah. And then at 1105, Dr. Joan A. Friedman will be on. She's a twin. <laughs> She's the mother of twins, and she's a psychotherapist specializing in twin issues. Yeah, she's listening right now. She's writing on her pad. She's going, what the heck did that guy just do? Was that a tape? Did the tape loop? No, it was a twin. That's right. That's uh, she's, right. Written a book called, <laughs> she's written a book called The Same But Different, How Twins Can Live, Love, and Learn to Be Individuals. Yeah. How Twins Can Live, Love, and Learn to Be Individuals. Yeah, you have to be your own person. Always. No Fun with Joe before. today. I have some sound bites from every single performer of every single halftime since the Super Bowl began. Wow, cool. Every single one. <laughs> I will play a piece of music from each of those halftime performers. Mm -hmm. And your job is to tell me <laughs> who they are, <laughs> who is performing. <laughs> By the way, I did watch the uh, Bruno Mars Slash, uh, what was the group? Uh, Red Hot Chili Red Peppers. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. I thought that was really good. Oh, what they I did. saw. Did you? Did you see it? I did. I saw the whole thing. They did an outstanding job. No, I, Very I, outstanding. I'm being honest with you when I tell you I did not watch the Super Bowl because, well, two things. I don't get TV in my house. And mm -hmm. second of all, I probably, I don't know, maybe I would have watched it if I have TV. Yeah. But anyway, I watched the, uh, the, the halftime performance this morning on YouTube, which is my go-to place when I miss anything, because mm -hmm. it's always right there. <laughs> I'm so glad they brought a young group, I just a, thought, a young person. You know, I don't know time. Bruno Mars, but I watched mm -hmm. a couple of interviews with him. This sounds. This seems like a really nice guy. He's got really, he's really talented. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad, I'm glad. Not to say that there was anything untalented about all the previous entertainers. They've been, of course, very talented. But mm -hmm. this is a new guy, right? Yeah. Young he's new guy. New guy he's, yes. not, he's not making the news for doing wacky things. He's just, no. he's just purely talented. Mm -hmm. so, he is know. amazing. It's refreshing. And, and, then, and then it looked like he had a nice relationship with those other nuts. Yeah. Like the hot, hot jelly pippers. <laughs> yeah, uh, they, they were really well, they, they But they, they were really good, too, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they were good in a different way. Oh, they were wonderful. But they seemed to get along. He was singing with them for a little bit in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then after they were done, he sang this really beautiful song. Amazing. And everybody had lights on their hat, right? Yeah. In the audience? Yeah. Right? It that, was That was so, kind of cool. So that was kind of fun to watch. It was such fun. And the Red Hot Chili Peppers only were half naked, so I give them credit for not being all naked. <laughs> I don't know this. She, you, you would think as much as I enjoy music, I would know this group better, but... <laughs> Hold on, the phone has rung. Let me take a phone that, call. You know, That's what Galen said. So he knows more yeah, about it than I do. That, He's a sports yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, by the way, as far as the Super Bowl, the sports part of Super Bowl, yes. that's, hold on, don't bring, even bring it up yet, because yeah. I won't know what to say. No. <laughs> Galen Unold is the go-to man for the sports topic stuff. Yes, he he and then the afternoon guys, <laughs> Buddy Martin and, and Tom Schmitz and, yeah. and, Austin and Austin and everybody in the afternoon can do sports. Yeah. Robin can actually do sports better than me. <laughs> a whole lot better. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so and uh, and I was reading my I was reading the the posts from the different people on Facebook that I'm familiar mm -hmm. with. A couple of guys up in New York that are really sports guys too. I was yeah. Paying attention to what they were posting. Good morning. You're on the air. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Um, and the national anthem was sung by someone that could actually carry a tune. Oh, I missed that. Who did that? Yeah, uh, she was uh, she was an opera singer, and she was a graduate of Potsdam State, the Crane School of Music. All right. Oh, what's her uh, name? Yeah, gosh, I missed that part. What's and, her name? Uh, man, um, I didn't write it down, uh, oh. but. Uh, uh, I'll look I, it up. I was made aware that, that she was a graduate of Potsdam State, which was right across the river from Clarkson. 
All right, all right, excellent. Yeah. National anthem at Super Bowl. Let me see. Super yeah. Bowl 2014. Let me see who did it. Let's see. It'll tell us in a second. This is the amazing thing about the computer now, right? It is. The national anthem. Uh, I don't know. There's a million things here. I can't. I can't. I can't forget. All right. Yeah, oh, is it Renee Fleming? Renee Fleming. Oh, okay. That's it, yeah. Renee Fleming is what it says. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. All right. Have a good day. Thank Bye. you. By, by the way, um, there was a commercial. Uh, for Coca-Cola, I guess it was, uh-huh. sung in several different languages. It was oh, yeah. the America the Beautiful. Yes, it Is was. Is that right? Now, I didn't see it live, of course, but one of my friends in New York, in fact, Jimmy McCauley, the, the uh, firefighter that we oh, interviewed okay. for September 11th, uh-huh. he posted it, and it had a lot of flack for, uh, he, he felt like it was a wonderful representation of the multicultural world we live in. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got a lot of flack from people saying, no, that song should be sung in English. And so. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I agree with Jimmy. I, I, this is, um, this is we, we get along here. Yes, we do. We get along here. No, nobody's saying anything is a national language. That's one of the things. I know it's a topic. By yeah. the way, there was a, um, a veteran from Bellevue mm-hmm. in the Budweiser commercial. Yeah. Did you see that? Oh, yeah, Ronnie pointed that out to me. He had had Bellevue, Florida on his hat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I uh, did a, what do you call it, a screenshot of that uh-huh. of that little piece? Psst, just yeah. got a picture of him mm-hmm. and put it on the WOCA Facebook page. I'm guessing everybody saw it before I did because I saw it this morning. Well, thank you for doing that. That was really nice of you to, to do that. And I don't know his name. And it's, it was way too early for me to call Hank. I know Hank and his guys will know who this is. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's a veteran. He was wearing a VFW hat, I, th- yes. I think. Um, in and he, it said Bellevue, Bellevue, Florida. And I think his first name is Bill. Now, why I think that is because other people posted it also on Facebook. Oh, okay. And I, I read some. I read somebody wrote, "Go, f- you go, Bill. We're proud of you, Bill," or something like that. Oh, wow. And so I mad. I think that the guy's name is Bill, but I don't want to speak out of line. Yeah, that was a great. No, that was great, and thank you for doing that. And then the only other commercial, <laughs> I got a big kick out of this one. <laughs> and I, I honestly was kind of half looking at it, but still, I got the gist of it. This little dog, what, right? And the big, it was a car commercial, right? Yeah. And they're trying to talk about high, uh, mixed breeds oh, or something. Hybrids, yeah. Hybrids. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> the big-headed dog. Oh, that was hilarious. Oh, yeah, that made me laugh so much. That was hilarious. <laughs> what the, it reminded me of something though. I don't, it reminded me of. Uh, oh, we had a big-headed dog in our show. <laughs> we had a big-headed dog. We had a big-headed yeah, 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 dog yeah. with seven puppies. Yeah, but this was a vicious dog, and this wasn't yeah. the, in the commercial. What didn't he yeah, become he, vicious or something? Yeah, he did. <laughs> at the end, he anyway. hit that lady's guitar just. <laughs> Oh, and, and, well, yeah, what's her name again? Uh, Sarah McLaughlin. Yeah, yeah. Was that really her? I think so, She looked yeah. good. Yeah, she looked great. She a lot of really famous good. people in those all of those commercials. Including Bruce a guy Willis. from Bellevue. That was awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we, we had, we're having fun talking about it. I'm sorry I didn't take a second look at the news right now, but maybe maybe I'll get there. I don't know. After the, after the break, we're going to continue talking about the Super Bowl, I guess. But we're not going to do anything about sports because I wouldn't know the first thing to say. Yeah. We'll do that after we have Galen on the phone. Then he can tell us all the sports stuff that I don't know how to talk about. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go to Pastor Smith. Well, a good day to you, and welcome again this morning to Bring Back the Bible. This is Pastor Smith. Our program is called Bring Back the Bible, so the question is, what is the most popular verse in the Bible? Well, surveys show that the most popular verse by far is John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It sums up most of the Bible in a few words, doesn't it? Martin Luther once called it the gospel in a nutshell. It is so profound that the greatest theologians in history have pondered its many deep implications, and yet it is so simple that little children in our Sunday school learn it. It tells us that there is a God and that he loves us. He sent Jesus Christ to become a man and live a perfect life. Christ then suffered and died for our sins. He also rose from the dead and returned to heaven. Mission accomplished. Though we all deserve to go to hell, God says we can go to heaven by placing our soul faith in Jesus Christ. God will forgive us 
all our sins and make us his children. For centuries, people around the world have believed John 3.16. Millions have taken great comfort in it as they die. Truly, it is a wonderful verse. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Lodge Health and Rehabilitation Center, a Greystone Health Network facility, is hosting a community open house on Thursday, February 13th from 11 a.m. till 2 p.m. There will be tours of the redesigned Rapid Recovery Center. No more drab, all fab. Plus, stations where you can talk with a cardiologist, dietitian, have your blood pressure or EKG taken free of charge. The Lodge Health and Rehabilitation Center, 635 Southeast 17th Street here in Ocala, Thursday, February 13th from 11 till 2 p.m. For more information, call 629-7921. Hi, Danny Warfel here. Get moving with Florida Credit Union's fast and easy loan approval process. Let Florida Credit Union start up a new car loan for you today. No more waiting, hassles, or stop signs. You can even apply online. With a strong financial team behind you, you can enjoy great rates and fast approvals. It's all about personalized service and a streamlined process. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Howdy, RL here to tell you about a great deal at Dairy Queen. For only $4.49, you can warm up to a hot, juicy combo of either a foot-long, quarter-pound all-beef chili dog or a tasty, home-style cheeseburger. Smoking hot off the char grill. Both get fries and a drink. You can add a Sunday for only 99 cents. Now that's a doggone good deal at Dairy Queen Silver Springs, where they always treat you like kings and queens. This is a public notice. Local residents can now save thousands of dollars on their next car, truck, or SUV. It's not a tent sale. Because no tent is big enough to hold this many cars. It's OcalaForSale.com. Say goodbye to sticker shock. OcalaForSale.com has thousands of vehicles with no stickers at all. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSale.com. Prices and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer upcharge. Undercoding less proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. ABC News Now, I'm Dave Schreiber. Researchers say gay and bisexual teenage boys use illicit steroids at a rate almost six times higher than straight kids do. Reasons for the differences are not clear. The study in today's Journal of Pediatrics looked at more than 17,000 boys. 4% of the straight boys said they have used steroids, and 21% of the gay or bisexual teens said they did. One doctor of adolescent medicine at a children's hospital in Chicago says the higher rates are shocking, but he notes gay teens often have body image issues. Party time in Seattle to celebrate the team's Super Bowl win. The Seattle Seahawks beat the Denver Broncos 43-8 Sunday night in New Jersey. Hollywood taking to Twitter to express sadness over the death of Oscar-winning actor Philip Seymour Hoffman. This is ABC News. Celebrate President's Day with the freedom of choice at Renaissance Center. Right now, you can take home name brand, big screen, smart LED TVs, washer and dryer pairs, even laptops and tablets. Your choice for one low price with no credit check. Hurry into Renaissance Center now through February 22nd for the President's Day sale and get big brands for small payments with no credit check. Only at Renaissance Center, where you're free to choose. Rental purchase lease transaction offer expires February 22nd, 2014. See store for details. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna let go of the bike now. Wait, not yet, Dad. No, just keep pedaling. You've got it. Don't let go, don't let go. There are moments in life that cause us to hesitate. I already did. You're doing it. Woohoo! I'm doing it. But once we take action, we're awfully glad we did. Markets are changing and interest rates are still low. If you're thinking about getting into the real estate market, now may be the time to make your move. Every market's different. Call a Realtor today and visit Realtor.com. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. 
The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Life jackets save lives. Swear in Florida. Some dense fog for a while this morning. Otherwise, another unseasonably warm day today with a mix of sun and clouds and a high of 79 to 83. It'll be partly cloudy tonight, though 60 inland, 67 on the coast. Tomorrow, partly sunny and very warm with a shower or two around in the afternoon, the high 78 to 82. For Wednesday, mostly cloudy and warm with a shower around in the afternoon, the high 80 to 84. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, your company supplier of banners, digital decals, yard signs, and magnetic signs. Where you give them approved artwork by noon, the next day by 4 p.m., you pick up your banners, digital decals, yard signs, and magnetic signs. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, 368-2404. That's 368-2404. Don't forget, they do vehicle wraps also. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, 368-2404. AA Lock, Dock, and Security has moved to a brand new location and wants to personally invite you to the spectacular grand opening event on Friday, February 7th. Come by and see the very latest in lock and security technologies. WOCA will be there broadcasting live and giving away some station swag and some fantastic prizes from top name brands like Stanley, Honeywell, Paxton Access, Aero Medico, Master Lock, and more. Plus, we're giving away not one, but two grand prizes. A home security system fully installed and monitored for a full year. And a business access control keyless entry system fully installed. There'll be hot dogs, hamburgers, drinks, and more. So bring a friend and come help us celebrate with food, fun, and prizes for the new location grand opening of AA Lock, Dock, and Security. It's all happening Friday, February 7th at the brand new location, 219 Northwest 10th Street, just a tenth mile east of 441. That's Friday, February 7th, AA Lock, Dock, and security. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Just say anything as long as you say something. Got it? This is the rule when it comes to job interviews. People who drank two cups of green tea a day lost three pounds in three months without changing their diets. People who sleep on the less side of the bed tend to be more cheerful, better able to handle stress, and tackle heavy workloads compared to those who sleep on the right side of the bed. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Jimmy Johnson wins the NASCAR Sprint Cup Championship, and Denny Hamlin wins the race. I'm Joe Moore. This is the Monday Morning Race Refresher, sponsored by Coca-Cola. It's time to refuel Coca-Cola. Open happiness. I'm at the grocery store, stocking up on Coke before the big race, when a cart full of chips just blows by me. I notice there's only one checkout stand open, so I accelerate and tuck in behind him. I'm keeping pace when some lady with a bunch of frozen burritos boxes me in. I draft off Chip Guy until we hit the corner. Burrito Light and I are cart to cart. I see an opening. Punch the guest and slinks out around him. As I'm coming down the stretch, I grab an ice cold Coke from the cart, snap it open, skid into the register, and smile for the security cameras. Oh, and I also have this coupon. Coca-Cola, open happiness. Denny Hamlin scored his first win of the season last night at Homestead Miami Speedway in the Ford EcoBoost 400. But he was upstaged by Jimmy Johnson, who won championship number six. There is there's nothing like this. I mean, we all work so hard to get to this point. Every team does. And I am uh, so grateful to drive for Hendrick Motorsports and drive this 48 car. And I'm so thankful that I, I have them all pulling in the same direction for me and giving me this awesome race car. So a uh, big shout out to the fans. want to thank them for their support. Uh, my, my family, I can't go without thanking them. Uh, without the support at home, um, I wouldn't be able to come out here and do my job either. Jimmy topped challenger Matt Kenseth by 19 points to claim the title. Denny Hamlin ended a season of misery with a win in the finale. His first victory since September of 2012. We came back from the you know, the mid-20s early in the race and we drove back up there. and just proud of Darian and this whole team for giving me a race winning car a week. We, uh, we tested up here and obviously paid off with all the good cars up front. So uh, just proud of this whole FedEx team's effort. Uh, my daughter's had enough. She wants to go to bed. Six through ten were Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, Jimmy Johnson, and Kevin Harvick. That's the Monday Morning Race Refresher. I'm Joe Moore on the Motor Racing Network. All right, I think I heard that one before. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how yeah. those things end up on there. All right. Well, anyway, thank you for tuning in. Nice looking Monday it is here at the Paddock Mall. 63 degrees. The temperatures this weekend were really good. Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden we went from we didn't have a spring. We went from winter to summer, didn't we? Yes, we did. <laughs> it was it was a pretty quick Zip-zip. jump. 
All right. Uh, so a couple things while Jim, uh, while during the break, uh, Jim Penn and before the break mentioned uh, the singer of the national anthem. Her name is Renee Fleming. I know we mentioned that. I went to look at what she looked like. She is a pretty lady, Robin. Oh, okay. Very I pretty did not lady. See her. Very pretty yeah, lady. Her. And uh, Super Bowl Forty Eight, uh, big long uh, Roman numeral. Mm-hmm. In two years, it'll be one letter. It'll be L. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Super Bowl <laughs> L. Wow, I wonder what they're going to do with that kind of a logo. Just an L. It'll be, be interesting. It'll be interesting if a team that starts with L is mm-hmm. one of the teams that plays that year. Oh yeah, wouldn't two that years, be cool? Two years from now. Yeah. yeah, that'd be so neat. So, so um, and I don't even ask me. I wouldn't Super even. I wouldn't have any clue which team being the in. Lions probably. Right? <laughs> don't the ask me. Lions. I'm telling you, don't ask me. Around. Don't ask me. <laughs> but it, but anyway, so we were thinking about this. This first Super Bowl didn't wasn't called Super Bowl, right? So they didn't right. really use a Roman numeral on the first one. Right. By the fifth one, they did. So there was a single letter that year, Super Bowl V or Super Bowl mm-hmm. Five. Yep. I don't think it was as big of a deal back then as it is as it became later. Oh on. no, no. By the time it was something. the tenth year, another single Roman numeral year, Super Bowl X, Super Bowl Ten, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And I remember Super Bowl Triple X. I remember that oh, one. Yeah. I remember that one. <laughs> That was an attention getter. <laughs> but, as, but as far as the single digits, uh, Super Bowl uh, L, <laughs> mm-hmm. Super Bowl uh, Fifty in uh, in two years. Well, it, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why that's fascinating, but it is. Also, <laughs> it is. I, we, we mentioned <laughs> off before the break also about the post commander from Bellevue who was in the Budweiser um, a Heroes Welcome Super Bowl commercial yes. yesterday. So I posted it. It's it's on the WLCA Facebook page, and then I shared it on mine with the question: Anybody know this man's name? Because I, uh, since I'm posting his face, I like I mean, he's in a national commercial. That's pretty cool. Yeah, very much so. So I don't know his name. So I have to share it. So Let's see if anybody know. Somebody. Oh, oh, and, oh, and Kathy just shared it too to ask if anybody knew his name on her side. Okay, good. Nice. Well, maybe we will get his name. Uh, Somebody posted somewhere else that his first name was Bill. That's all I know. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's see some other things. It was not as cold as they thought it would be, right? It was 45 degrees in New right. Jersey, right? Right. Exactly. So that's not too bad, which means anybody who bet that it would snow lost. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. It didn't snow at all, right? Right. And they, they said in the beginning that they didn't fly the blimps because of the snow and the ice. So I don't know if they managed to get a blimp up there or not. I, Did you happen I to turn know. over to the uh, puppy bowl, by the way? No, I didn't. Animal not. Planet. <laughs> no, no, it was just all that. I, I can't imagine that it's any different than any other year. Just yeah. <laughs> puppies jumping on each other. Uh, I, I, I battled trying to stay awake. It was, um, it was really tough. Ten eighteen is when it ended, and I went to bed. So now I don't know this. Maybe your son filled you in on this, Robin. Did you speak to TJ? I did. Uh, did he talk about the transit, the uh, mass transit problems in New Jersey? Were they an issue for the average commuter, or was it? Not really that big of a deal because oh, it was I, Sunday? Or? I didn't even think to ask him about that. I, okay. I just know that the snow, it, it, it was an issue the past couple of weeks for the snow. They, they weren't able to keep their regular schedules and all. So he and a few of the guys from work were working from home because the schedules right. were all, all out of whack. But as far as yesterday goes, I don't know. He's only almost four miles from the stadium. So I don't know what kind of problems they had. Him and his and my daughter-in-law were uh, playing video games last night, so they weren't even watching the game. So again, I'm, I'm guessing I'm the last to know this, but each seat at MetLife Stadium had a care package, which included, and I believe Galen mentioned this on Friday, hand warmers, earmuffs, lip balm, hats equipped with leds programmed to change color during the halftime performance that is so cool which was kind of cool i didn't cool. know that about the care packages. they get to keep the hat i guess right uh, probably what if yeah. they can control it once they get home uh anyway they were prepared for the heat they i mean for the cold they even had some heat lamps installed over the press box wow so, Pretty neat. Or in the, in, uh, not the press box, but the press seating. Mm-hmm. I guess the press box would be heated, right? Yeah. They had heat, heat, uh, heaters or whatever? They panned some of the celebrities that were in the celebrity boxes up there. Oh, yeah? Who was there? Yeah. Um, Michael Douglas was there. Paul McCartney was there. Oh, really? Uh, John Travolta was there. Really? Yeah. They panned that. So those were three. And they were all eating something. <laughs> so I figured if they were hot dogs, I wonder what kind Paul McCartney was eating. He must. Uh, he wasn't eating a hot dog. I guarantee. Veggie something. I'm but they sure. Were all eating and. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure of it. 
Uh, so the only other thing, oh, oh and Bill O'Reilly did a uh, an interview with President Obama just before the Super Bowl. Oh, he did on the phone or in person? No, in person. He was oh, there, and okay. then at and the he, Super Bowl. No, I don't know where he oh, was, okay. but it was it was but it was just it was on Fox just before uh huh the Super Bowl, and uh, uh, didn't hold any punches. The two gentlemen seemed to be. Uh, doing what they do best. I mean, the president answered the questions, and, uh, mm-hmm. and Bill O'Reilly didn't hold any punches with what he wanted to ask. Oh, good for him. Uh, but, but the president held his own as far as the responses would go. And at the end, uh, ended on a friendly, nice note, saying, uh, "Well, I'm, I'm no, I know you." Bill O'Reilly said, "I know you have a good heart, or something like that." And who do you think is going to win? And and he, was, he said 24 to 21. I can't remember who he said was going to win. But, oh, okay. But it wasn't that at all. It was, it was way lopsided, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, the, yeah. The Seahawks won by a big landslide. Huge. Okay. It was huge, yeah. I think the other guys only got one touchdown and then the extra yeah. two points at toward the very end. All right, so here's some of the tweets before we uh, take a break and go over to Galen. These are some of the tweets from the Super Bowl. Uh, let's see. And it says here, uh, yo... Your team's sideline is like your online dating profile. So much sadness in one place. Oh, gee, they must be talking about the Broncos then, right? Because they lost. Uh, and then another one. Yo, your team reminds me of delivery pizza. Took almost three hours to get where it's supposed to go. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> These are tweets from whoever. Uh, yeah. Next one says, healthcare.gov has been more effective than the Broncos offense tonight. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I think they were favored to win, if I understand uh, right. Let's see. Uh, next one. Hillary Clinton uh, s- says to Denver, at this point, what difference does, does it, it make? make? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that phrase is going to follow her forever. She uh, was cold. Here's a tweet from Senator Roger Wicker. He tweeted, switching over to downtown Abbey. Was that another show? I, I guess so. I guess it's a sitcom. Uh, another or, tweet says, time know. to pack up the Broncos the Broncos champions shirts for lucky kids in Central Africa. Oh. Oh, oh no. Gee. Uh, the next one, uh, breaking. Broncos calling in President Obama to quarterback the rest of the game. Mm. Oh, gee. Another uh, one from, from somebody who calls himself political math. Since there's no point in watching the rest of this game, let me show you my Pinterest board. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, there I bet there was a lot of money lost on that game last night. Uh, and then won, uh, Alexa shrugged. I'm just I don't know who that is, but she tweeted, "Give it away. The Broncos song of the day." <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, no. She must be a Broncos fan. <laughs> uh, they must all be. Broncos. Denver could really use a power outage right now at the Super Bowl. <laughs> Rick Rick Riley wrote that, whoever he is. Wow. Marco Rubio posted. Listen oh. to this. This is turning into one of those 80s Super Bowls, all blowouts. Oh, gosh. Uh, Blake Heiser tweeted, Peyton, have a Snickers. Why? You play like Eli when you're hungry. Oh, it must be a, some a, kind of... Uh, some, somebody uh, else yeah. explain it to me. I don't know. Must be another Super Bowl uh, guy. The Broncos' performance so far is proof that legalizing marijuana in Colorado was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> it was another tweet. Oh, that's funny. There you go. Oh, I think I know who Eli is. I think he's his brother. There you go. So anyway, so those yeah. are the, the tweets. All right, let's, let's push forward and, um, <laughs> and uh, make room. Galen, you nulled up next. He is... Uh, our go-to guy when we need to have some some sensible talk about sports because we mm-hmm. wouldn't know what to say. And else we have a guest, of course. Then we let them do all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll take a little break and be right back with Galen. Hey, it's Chrissy with Ocala Mac and PC Repair and Ocala Guest Wi-Fi to let you know we have you covered. We are the only local certified Apple and Microsoft computer company in Ocala. We are family owned and operated from mobile repair to wireless networks, viruses, new systems, or security cameras. We do it all. Check us out online, OcalaMacPC.com, or give us a call, 352-566-8324. Tell them Nick, Madison, or Mason, you and get free diagnostic. 
Get your internet telephone service from the company that brought affordable internet service to Ocala in the first place. All is safe is a sister company of Ocala Guest Wi-Fi, a company you've known and trusted for all your internet needs. Whether you need a phone or hundreds, we've got the products and services to meet your needs both now and in the future. Our plans include everything from local and long-distance calling to equipment maintenance and even software upgrades. You can count on All is Safe to give you cost certainty knowing that your bill will be the same next week, next month, or even next year. Call 352-450-8647 today. Tell them how to cut your monthly telephone bill up to 60%. Your home is safe, or is it? AA Lock, Dock, and Security. The name has been a staple in Ocala since 1985. Do you have the right equipment in place to have peace of mind when you are at home or away? AA Lock, Dock, and Security has the right people to install and monitor your home or business. Call today for a free on-site security analysis. Call 867-1965. AA Lock, Dock, and Security, 219 Northwest 10th Street, 867-1965. Hi, I'm Tom Ingram, CEO of Gateway Bank, inviting you to drop by our main office on Silver Springs Boulevard every Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. for the Community Gazette, a three-hour show focusing on our favorite community to live and work, Ocala, Marion County. Come join us with the voice of Ocala, Buddy Martin, in the new Old Fashioned Bank radio studio as we discuss a variety of interesting topics on the Community Gazette on WOCA The Source. Here are today's headlines from The Source, WOCA. Tomorrow, state lawmakers will take up a proposal that would prohibit school districts from collecting biometric information, including the characteristics of fingerprints, hands, eyes, and the voice. State Senator Dorothy Hugh Kill, a Port Orange Republican, brought the idea to the Florida Senate, but the proposal may meet resistance from local school boards, some of which want the flexibility to create their own policies. Florida's system of data collection and use is considered one of the best in the country. In addition to banning biometric data collection, the proposal specifies that parents must be notified annually about their rights regarding education records as already required by federal law. The bill also prohibits districts from collecting information on the political affiliation, voting history, or religious affiliation of a student, a student's parent, or a student's sibling. And it clarifies that personally identifiable data would not go to the federal government unless required by federal law. The Marion County Sheriff's Office is reporting the arrest of a 35-year-old man charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after he allegedly threatened to cut the throat of a motel employee. The arrested man is identified in the report as Daniel L. Ellis of Ocala. According to the report, Ellis was causing a disturbance at the Vacation Host Inn on South Pine Avenue around 2.30 p.m. Saturday trying to break the window of the manager's room. The report states that Ellis's wife, Regan Ellis, was fired from her job at the motel and that the couple was being evicted from their motel room. Another motel employee, identified as Leland Seeger, attempted to address the situation when Ellis reportedly displayed a hunting knife with a six-inch blade and threatened to cut Seeger's throat. Deputy Pamela Thomas arrived on the scene and found two folding knives on Ellis and retrieved the hunting knife from Ellis's wife. Ellis was being held at the Marion County Jail on $5,000 bond. The Marion County Sheriff's Office is reporting the arrest of a man after the family found the man covered with a blanket next to some clothing in a little girl's bedroom. The man is identified as Paul Michael Matheny. According to the report, Matheny is believed to be homeless. The family had been out, and after returning to their home on Northwest 31st Avenue, the mother and the seven-year-old daughter went into the daughter's bedroom and observed a moving blanket on the floor. They screamed, and the father, identified as Jesse Smith, ran to the room with a Glock 45 handgun. Smith held Matheny at gunpoint until deputies arrived. The report indicates that Matheny has had several convictions, including being convicted of exposure of sexual organs in 2011, 2012, and 2013. A fourth charge of exposure of sexual organs from August 2013 was dropped less than a week ago after it was determined that Matheny was incompetent. Jury selection is scheduled to begin today in the trial of 47-year-old Michael Dunn, a software developer charged with first-degree murder and attempted murder in the November 2012 shooting of 17-year-old Jordan Davis outside of a Jacksonville convenience store. Authorities say an argument over loud music led to the shooting. Davis was parked in a vehicle with three friends outside of the store. Dunn and his fiancée had just left a wedding reception and were heading back home when they stopped at the store and parked next to the SUV. 
SUV. An argument began after Dunn told them to turn the music down. One of Davis's friends turned the music down, but Davis then told him to turn it back up. Dunn became enraged, and he and Davis began arguing. Dunn pulled a 9mm handgun from the glove compartment and fired multiple shots into the SUV, killing Davis. Dunn's attorney said Dunn saw a gun and shot in self-defense, perhaps laying the groundwork for a case under Florida's Stand Your Ground law. And those are the headlines from the source, WOCA 96.3 FM and 1370 AM. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Life jackets save lives. Swear in Florida. Some dense fog for a while this morning. Otherwise, another unseasonably warm day today with a mix of sun and clouds and a high of 79 to 83. It'll be partly cloudy tonight, though 60 inland, 67 on the coast. Tomorrow, partly sunny and very warm with a shower or two around in the afternoon, the high 78 to 82. For Wednesday, mostly cloudy and warm with a shower around in the afternoon, the high 80 to 84. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. You're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics. Thank you very much, Mr. Relatively Deep Voice Man. Four minutes before 8 o'clock. Beautiful looking Monday, huh? Just a nice nice looking day, right? Oh, yeah. It's gorgeous. And uh, I, I think that the football fans who really like a, a close game were, were very disappointed with last night's game. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> I think so. The only thing I really watched was the halftime show, and I, th- I thought those guys were really good for, cha- oh, for a were... change. I mean, I've, I've picked on the performers in mm-hmm. the past, but... Well, because they were old. These guys were, you know, at, at least... Yeah, know, but they could have been, been a bad either. performance. I mean, but but yeah. this guy, Bruno Mars, Mars. was really good. And uh, yeah. I, I loved his interaction with the next group, the uh, Chili Pepper guys. Yep. And I thought they were really good. Mm-hmm. You know, I prefer the music of Bruno Mars... Believe yeah. it or not, <laughs> um, but too. but but I really thought it was good, and uh, and then I saw some interviews with Bruno Mars. And I thought, wow, he's a nice guy, you know, not, not full of himself or anything like that. At least it didn't seem like it. But I can't really comment on the sports. That's why yeah. Galen, you know, this is, is <laughs> so good to have on this show. Of course, he does an important job of getting the information out there about giving blood. By the way, this Friday. Mm-hmm. I'm eligible to give blood again. Yes, we are. And uh, we'll be over at Life South on Friday. Mm-hmm. Good, good morning, Galen. How you doing? Hey, good morning, Larry, Robin. How are you all? Pretty good. Where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Ocala today. In Ocala. Yeah. Did you see? Did you see the 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 shot of the guy uh, in the commercial from Budweiser, the the veteran from Bellevue? Yeah. Yeah. That's well, cool. he was from Winter Park. Okay, but his hat says Bellevue. Yeah, it does. Well, uh, yeah. He's from Winter Park. There was a shot in there where it was somebody from the VFW in Bellevue, but he, the kid himself is from Bell, from Winter Park. Oh, oh, the young man is from Winter Park. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. See, I didn't know that. Oh, that's awesome. Well, maybe that's why there's a Bellevue guy in there. Yeah, maybe right. he knows well, him. Well, they had a big parade for him. Oh. I think they invited the, the VFW from Bellevue. Oh, that. okay. Well, wh- well, what I'm referring to is the older gentleman. Uh, he's, yeah. we- I guess he's wearing a, a VFW. Where's the picture of him? I, I had it and here. And he's a he's veteran. He's wearing a VFW cap, and uh, yeah, he's he's from the from the VFW in Bellevue. Yeah, it says Post Commander 2009 and 10, yeah. Bellevue, Florida. Yeah. Yeah, but he's a veteran, so that shouldn't take away from him. No, no, I just didn't realize we were talking about two different people. Yeah, oh, so the star, the the, the young man returning. It's from Winter Park. Oh, Oh, okay. Cool, all right, I didn't know that. Well, anyway, so did you watch the whole game, or did you turn it off after you realized there was nothing more to watch? No, I watched the whole game, just because you never know if there's a good commercial or something coming on. But plus, I was happy that Seattle won. (laughs) Oh, really? Why, you don't like Denver? Uh, No, I don't don't like the way they... uh, I don't like John Elway, so anytime his team loses, I'm fine with that. So yeah, but is he is he play? I mean, is he retired or was he still playing? Yeah, he's he's their uh, he's their he is now. Not the, he's their G, he is the, he's their president of operations or something like that. Oh, so. no, he won't be there long. <laughs> yeah, he will. I mean, he got him to a Super Bowl. By the way, the the uh, game had a record. This is about the old, only sports thing I can tell you. Um, the number of seconds it took for the Seahawks to score was 12 seconds. It's the fastest right. score in Super Bowl history. Yep. 12 wow. seconds. Wow. 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 So what was that uh, moment like for you as a, as a sports watcher? It was great because, you know, it was uh, Seattle was – usually if you score safety, you're going to win. And then all the turnovers and things like that, it was, it was evident that uh, Seattle just overwhelmed Denver. And they, Denver could never get in sync. 
So, I mean, they never, uh, you know, in their first half, they the, in the first quarter they only had like 11 yards, I think. So they were never in sync. So it was pretty obvious it was going to be over. It was just a matter of how much, if they could score at all, and, and you know, just how big of a deficit they were going to have at the end of the game. Wow, wow. So was anything entertaining about the game itself for you? Hmm. Oh, was it? Was it? Was uh, it? Not, not really. I mean, it was a. If it was like um, week ten in the NFL, it would have been a boring game. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know, it was. In, I mean, it was interesting that Seattle scored almost every possible way you could score. So they scored on a kick return, on a safety, on a interception return. I mean, they they scored every possible way almost. So that, that was kind of interesting. And and both teams did the two pointer thing too. They went for two. Yeah. Yeah, both teams <laughs> yeah. did. Yeah. A win for two. There you go. That's the proper jargon. Robin's trying. <laughs> Point conversion. I know better than yeah. to even try. <laughs> I know better than to even try. So did, did you have any any comments on the, uh, let's see, the, the national anthem being sung by... Uh, she An- was fantastic, wasn't she? I didn't see her. I, oh, I, I, national anthem is Jim it called. Was incredible. Oh, good. I'm going to have to watch it later. Absolutely incredible. I mean, it's, the, it's pretty rare when you remember the national anthem. Um, and, and it's usually a bad thing when you do. You know, it's the the Roseanne. They must have given it the Roseanne Barr treatment. Um, but it, it's right up there with Whitney Houston as far as. Oh, oh that's, well, that's, that's, that's that, good. If coming from you, that's that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, it was incredible. So I, I mean, it was incredible. They had the choir in the background. It was it was incredible. Wasn't oversung. You know, it was just just incredible. Wow, so. wow. Renee Fleming, we have to remember her name. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty I pretty lady her. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Bruno Mars was fantastic. That's the that's the best halftime show, as you said earlier, in a long time. Oh, I'm because glad you agree relevant. with that too, huh? And, and it was relevant. I'm a I'm a Bruno Mars fan in the first place. I think it, I think his music is good, so You know how long I've been a Bruno Mars fan? About an hour? <laughs> maybe three. Maybe three <laughs> hours. I think I watched it three hours ago. But you, you know why? Because he could just flat out sing. You know, I mean, it's uh, you. He just can sing, and and I think that's that's always good when you when you have a performer that's not worried about entertaining you with anything other than his voice. Um, he could dance, obviously, and play drums really well. Oh my goodness, I had no. Yeah, I saw him play the drums. Yeah, he was great. Like, who knew? Yet. Did you know he could do that? Anybody? No, knew? I didn't no. know either. My son's a huge fan of Bruno Mars. And oh really? He didn't know he played drums either. So. Wow, it was uh, it was good, and it was good to see the the Chili Peppers. I'm a I'm a I'm a big fan of the Chili Peppers. Seen them in concert twice, and that's the most clothes I've ever seen them have on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I was like, wow, uh, he's got pants on. It must be really cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it, it was a family event, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, let's go to the phones. Got a couple of callers uh, waiting to speak to you. Good morning. You're on there with Galen. I think chili peppers goes good with your nachos in Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking when they announced that chili peppers were going to be there. Hey, uh, I, I thought it was really great that Percy Harvin had a great game, being that he was a Florida Gator. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. was I was and, a little uh, shocked that he was going to – he had that big of an impact on the game. Well, they said earlier in the week that, uh, that the Broncos really didn't have much tape on him this year because he really didn't play that much. So it would be – it was interesting to see what he did, and he did have a big night, and that was I, I was happy for him because he's now a local Florida Gator, and it was pretty cool. You know, it's that amazing. Nice. He he had two runs, what one catch, and he returned a he kick. Did it. He returned, yeah, yeah, and, and a kick. I mean, there's there's no reason to watch tape. That was just Denver not not playing disciplined football. So yeah, that was just but, really uh, that, really that was poor exciting. special teams. Yep. yep. Yeah, local. It gave us it gave us uh, Ocala people, you know, something to cheer about, and that was cool. And uh, then we had our little uh, Wisconsin Badger quarterback in the Super Bowl. You know, and he would play a lot. He would keep telling me, "Well, he didn't play much with Wisconsin, but hey, anybody." I, I, I don't know if that's the first time a Wisconsin Badger uh, quarterback ever uh, won a Super Bowl. But I said I'd ask Galen that he probably would know. Yeah, I'm racking my brain. I'm thinking of anybody else. I don't it, think there has It may friends. be. I don't, it may be. I, yeah, yeah, I'll have to I, You'd have to later. go back a long well, have way. Have a great day. And, Dang, uh, thank enjoy you. Enjoy the day after the Super Bowl. Thank you, Linda. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, you guys are typically known for running backs and uh, linemen. So. And his name is Russell? Yeah. The Russell guy we talk Wilson. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure I had the right name here. He yeah. was, well, most people say he went to NC State. 
but he did go to Wisconsin. For he a um, he makes five hundred twenty-six thousand two hundred seventeen two seventeen, I guess, per year. Uh-huh. 526, 217. The other quarterback, the losing team, the guy makes 882,352. Wow. Like right. $300,000 more a mm-hmm. year. Gosh. Well, this guy's pay, pay raise will go up. Isn't Peyton this, Manning makes more than that. Peyton Manning? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. Each, that's, wait, hold the sign. The salary made by Broncos quarterback Peyton Manning each week. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. He makes more than. He, Peyton Manning makes more per week. Per oh, game. oh, wow. wait, wait, wait. Let Russell me let, let me yeah. read this again. The base salary, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. the base salary of Russell Wilson for the entire season Correct. is five hundred twenty-six thousand two hundred seventeen dollars. Right. The salary of Peyton Manning each week is eight hundred eighty-two thousand three hundred fifty. Oh, yeah. I, I thought that's where you were supposed you were going. I made yeah. a mistake there. That is there. insane. Three quarters of a million dollars plus a week. Holy, that is well insane. for sixteen weeks. Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'd take a week. <laughs> well, yeah. Anyway, wow. But, I mean, when you look at what he's done for that team, it's, you know, and that's what somebody's willing to pay him. Yeah, yeah. then it's understandable, sure. I mean, I, I, I'm I, a firm believer that if you have a job and you're doing well and you should, you know, be recognized for it. So So in two years, every, everybody who doesn't really understand Roman numerals, in two years, everybody's going to know that L means 50. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Super Bowl true. L. Yeah. Super Bowl large. <laughs> large, yeah. It seems to me like I mean the the guy, the quarterback on the Seahawks and he, he every time he fired that ball it was like in uh, you know, really tight circumstances and the and the receivers, you know, got it like practically all of the time. It was just amazing to me the accuracy that he was doing that and and the catches were catching it. Absolutely. That's true. Yeah. By, by the way, and when you flip <laughs> when you flip a coin, it's fifty fifty. Uh huh. You know the coin that they flipped to start the game has exactly mm. been flipped fifty uh, fifty. Really? Yeah. It's the same coin. Oh, I don't know, but it's it's 40, 40, no. 48 no. games. Oh. And it has landed on heads twenty four of those times. Really? Yeah, that would that's shocking. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Exactly twenty four. I'm looking at some wow. interesting facts right now. The guys look kind of smaller to me, though. I, you got you know. a big TV. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because, you know, like, you know, years ago, it seemed like they were bulkier and stuff like that. But these guys look like they're they're littler now. No, they're bigger than they ever have been. So oh. let me, they're so, always getting bigger. So let me tell okay. you some of the things people were betting on and tell me wh- who won. Put it to you this way. And, and if you look at if you go back and look at the first Super Bowl and you look at the, the weight of the offensive linemen. Right. For mm-hmm. each team. That's now what a what a safety weighs. Oh, okay. Which is the back end of the and, and some wide receivers and some running backs and quarterbacks even. So yeah, it's not they're they're much much larger. Oh. Uh, it's not even it's not even comparable. All right, so pe- so any team that Vince Lombardi coached would get blown out today. I oh, know it's going to offend some people, but it's it wouldn't even be close. Oh, okay. If he played with his players back then. Uh-huh. The Bart stars of the world. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if you bet that it would snow, mm-hmm. you lost, right? Yeah. If you bet that um, no Sean Marino would cry during the national anthem, would you win or lose? Did he cry? Uh, you know what? I, I, I don't know if they even showed him. Okay. I don't Who's remember he? him being seen. He's the running back for the Denver Broncos. Apparently he's got a reputation for crying during the National League. Yeah, he oh. cries. Yeah, that, that's his thing. It's an emotional <laughs> time for him. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, no, you know me what? If, you're, if you're not fired up about that, then especially at the Super Bowl, a lot of guys cry during the National Anthem with the Super Bowl. Uh, would any member of the Red Hot Chili Peppers be shirtless during the performance? If you voted, if you bet yes, then you won. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that was a slam dunk bet. <laughs> it was... It was whether or not he had kept any clothes on. Was, was <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, will, will who will the Super Bowl MVP mention first in his speech? Do we know? Uh, you know, I didn't see it. I, I didn't. I don't. I'm, I'm not a big post game show guy, but I. I oh, I you know, what? know who won. It was a linebacker that won it. So 
I don't think anybody won that bet. Do you know what? It was, it was an interesting thing, too, that I had to look up, because, and I'll explain why. I have a friend, and he's up in New York. His name is Jimmy McCall, and he is a firefighter. And Rob and I interviewed him when we did our 9-11 thing. And uh, he has an older brother named Terry. I remember this from when I was a kid. And so on his Facebook page, he wrote, um, oh, my goodness, let me find it here. He wrote something about t- only Terry McCauley would, int- would uh, tackle a quarterback or something like that mm-hmm. from the Jet- a Jets quarterback, something like that. Let me, let me read what he wrote. Because I'm going to okay, get it. I'm going to get it wrong. That's interesting. I, I want to know why he he would say that. Okay. <laughs> well, this is why I'm uh, Galen's my my go-to guy for the answer here. Okay. All right. So my friend up in New York, Jimmy McCauley, writes only Terry McCauley would intercept a Jet quarterback at the Super Bowl. Okay. So then I looked it up to see what ex- yeah, exactly he's talking about because I thought he was talking about his brother, but he's not. Apparently, there is a, a referee last night named Terry McCauley. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's all I know. Do you know what, he, what he's talking about with, with tackle? Yeah, yeah. Well, what happened was is uh, they gave the coin to Joe Namath to flip, and he flipped it, but they forgot to ask if the, other, if the team called heads or tails. So it was actually a really nice play by the, by the referee. No, oh, okay, okay. Okay. And, and it doesn't, doesn't look like he could be Jimmy's brother. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess I, guess I would have known that. All right. Well, fun stuff. So you had a good time. Sounds like a good yeah, time. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Did you have snacks? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think we did. Yeah. Any favorite commercials? Um, I think the uh, uh, there were the, the Doritos time machine. I thought was pretty funny. Oh, that was um, funny. I saw that one. one. I mean, how many car commercials can you fit into a football game? <laughs> I think yeah. Every major car company had at least one. Um, and then, of course, my favorite was the uh, the Tim Tebow. T-Mobile con- uh, uh, commercials, which were hilarious. He goes, yeah, I don't currently have an NFL commercial uh, contract, but now I can do my own stunts. It was pretty funny. That that was the. Oh, I gotta look it up. Those were, those were the funny ones, but. Um, so listen, I saw the I saw the one with the uh, the retro or the eighties taking their their Radio Shack back or something. Yeah, like that? that was pretty mm-hmm. good. I mean, just because there are like. They were famous. Three hundred eighties references <laughs> in that sixty com- sixty second commercial. Yeah. yeah. So there were, that was pretty good, but um, you know, I thought the Budweiser commercial was pretty bad. Um, yeah, it was all right. I mean, all the car commercials. My gosh. I was happy like to the, see all of the uh, uh, Muppets in that one car commercial. Doctor Teeth. They had Animal and Janice and Zoot and all the band members were in that one car commercial. That was pretty funny. Yeah, I think if you like the Muppets, you like that one. Yeah. So that, the one, so that was the one with the mixed up dog. That was a car commercial too, right? That was that one was actually funny. That was yeah, funny because they uh, don't compromise. That was funny, but again, I mean, there were so many commercials. <laughs> and Bruce Willis was in there, and he he was really serious and deadpan, and it was so it was funny because he said, "I'll bet you were expecting me to blow up things." Yeah, so I, he I, was I serious, oh, okay. kind of goofy. Okay. After about ten seconds of just looking at his face, and mm-hmm. again, I, I I think they just tried too hard on that one. See, this is the advantage of living in today's world. I don't have to actually watch the thing. I can yeah. watch all the all the parts I want <laughs> oh. to see today. That's right. And all I really watched is I watched a few commercials and I watched the uh, the halftime show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I watched the National asleep. Anthem though. She did a phenomenal. I have to job. watch that. I have to watch that. <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> job. And the uh, uh, yeah, and you're right. The Time Machine one was funny. Is that the I one where the lady's that. covered with Doritos? She's in the bathtub. No. No. no, no. This is the Doritos one where the the kids like free Time Machine. He goes, Oh, okay. What's it run on? Doritos. And it's so, a big refrigerator box. Yeah, and so he goes in there, and there's this rustling, and he comes out, and it's, it turns out he's on this neighbor's, this kid's using, like, his neighbor's yard, who's an old man. He goes, oh, my gosh, you've aged. I've gone so far in the future. It's funny. Ah, yeah, to watch he was it. really it's believing funny. he was. <laughs> All right, before we go uh, to our serious stuff, let's, let's find out what a phone call is about. Good morning. You're on the air with Galen. Good morning, everyone. This is Ann. I just wanted to say a uh, shout-out to the Marion Theater. Tommy and I, we don't have television. So we went down there and watched it there. There were not very many people there, but it was just great, and, and they were so nice at the theater. If you, didn't, if you wanted to see it and you didn't have a television or didn't, I don't know, whatever, you should have gone down there. They were very nice. It was a nice evening. We loved it. 
and it was great to see that gator uh, being somewhat of a star. Mm-hmm. And it just it just looked like uh, Peyton Manning. He never smiled, and he just looked like, especially in the beginning when they made that safety. You should have seen the look on his face. They flashed it up there a couple times. Was like, what was that? It looked like he was <laughs> saying. I mean, he just he was just. I think that just did him in, and that was. 12 seconds into it, it was like, where am I? What's happening? But it was, it was great, and, it, and the theater was so nice. The people are so nice there. You just can't help but like them. And I, I really want to say a big thank you to that theater for having that. There you because go. Because we had a wonderful time. And now I'll say goodbye. Thank you. That was a wonderful endorsement. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate that. I'm glad you nice. had a good time. I think Buddy and Tom went to that, too. Yeah, night, yeah but that was the only time I heard it mentioned that, you know, they were actually saying something that it would be open for the Super Bowl. So huh. it could add more advertising. Oh, oh, and, and one more thing, Galen. How did your turnout for your Oak Rainer Christian Baseball recruit teams go? Oh, yeah, the important sports news yeah. of the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah, we, we uh, you know, we're, we're, we're still having people sign up, but it's going well so far. So um, we actually picked teams this week. So if you want to sign up, you can. This is your last week. Oh, wonderful. Uh, all right. Uh, Robert, we need a segue from sports, sports, and more sports to donating blood. Well, there's always something that people can see about a sporting event, whether it's the commercials or halftime or food or whatever it is. There's always some kind of sense of camaraderie when sporting events happen. And you can feel that camaraderie when you go to Life South Community Blood Centers to donate blood, do apheresis, go on the bone marrow donor listing, or become an ambassador because that's what uh, caring is all about. It's all about community, and Life South Community Blood Centers gets an A-plus for that all the time. There you go. Oh, thank you. There you go. Uh, again, where's the Blood Mobile today? Uh, today we're at um, Planet Fitness tonight, and then uh, today we're at Sullivan Cadillac. So all right. come by, go buy a car, and then go work out. Planet Fitness, fitness, fitness. <laughs> Planet Fitness. Yeah. All right. And uh, and what's the state of the blood supply? Is it, how's it doing? Uh, we've recovered some. So from our from our three days of being closed uh thankfully the blood usage wasn't as high as we were expecting up there but uh so right now we're okay um we'll really get a better feel today uh as to where we're at but right now we're okay but we still need people to give that's for sure right i'll be there friday so we'll yes, rob them. we will you, get, you got two you got two pints coming from WOCA <laughs> on friday great <laughs> Great. All right. If you can't get to the Budmobile, you can go next door to the Cascades on Silver Springs Boulevard. That's where Life South is located. If you were in Denellen, where would you go, Robin? Right next door to Sweet Bay. Sweet Bay. Sweet Bay. All right, Galen. Thank you for being our sports guy, as always. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you thank for everything. You all right, we will take a little break, and all right, bye, all. we'll be right back. You've Got a Garden, and we've got a show for you called You've Got a Garden with your host, Master Gardener, Carol Ann Baldwin. Carol Ann answers your questions about your flowers, your veggies, your grass, your trees, even questions about your bugs. And she's only on WOCA, so don't miss Carol Ann Baldwin and You've Got a Garden each Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. right here on WOCA The Source. Good credits, bad credits. It's none of our business because we're not an auto dealer. We're not a bank. We're not your mother. We're OcalaForSale.com, Marion County's marketplace for cars, trucks, and SUVs. We've got thousands of sellers standing by to take your call. No middleman. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSale.com. License and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer charge. Undercutting rust proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. I know you're wondering, where the heck am I? All right, let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to find the Ocala prices. It was uh, lost for a second. All right, the average for a price of... The average price for a gallon of regular unleaded gasoline in Ocala right now is $3.32. It is down a penny. The best price I can tell you about was called in 39 minutes ago down in Bellevue. The racetrack on Absher Boulevard down there has gas for three twenty four dollars a gallon. Boy, there wow. it is. AA Lock, Dock, and Security has moved to a brand new location and wants to personally invite you to the spectacular grand opening event on Friday, February 7th. 
Come by and see the very latest in lock and security technologies. WOCA will be there broadcasting live and giving away some station swag and some fantastic prizes from top name brands like Stanley, Honeywell, Paxton Access, Aero Medico, Masterlock, and more. Plus, we're giving away not one, but two grand prizes. A home security system fully installed and monitored for a full year. And a business access control keyless entry system fully installed. There'll be hot dogs, hamburgers, drinks, and more. So bring a friend and come help us celebrate with food, fun, and prizes for the new location grand opening of AA Lock, Dock, and Security. It's all happening Friday, February 7th at the brand new location, 219 Northwest 10th Street, just a tenth mile east of 441. That's Friday, February 7th, AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing. Our tractor services include bush hog, disking, front end loader, box blade, and stump grinding. We also have zero turn mowers for the smaller paddocks, aisleways, fence rows, and lawn care. Fence row spraying is also available for weed control. We are licensed and insured. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440 or online at Powell Gene, G-E-N-E, at yahoo.com. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing. Hi, this is Brad. I want to take a moment to talk about a serious issue. In the next five years, the aviation industry is projected to have a shortage of commercial pilots. Now is the time to start training. Ocala Flying Club has started a scholarship for the youth of Marion County ages 17 to 24. The club will donate up to $4,000 towards a pilot's license. This will help get the student on their way to obtain their commercial pilot license. If this sounds like something you would be interested in, or if you know someone that would be, please contact Ocala Aviation Services, 861-7484. Did you know that Marion County has a vast equine business? Tune in every Friday at 930 for Horse Sense, when we connect, communicate, and educate you on ways to participate in and enjoy all the equine adventures this area has to offer. Plus, if you're a business owner, learn how you can extend your reach into the equine community and improve your bottom line. Fridays at 930, right here on The Source. I'm a different breed. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. All right, 23 minutes after 8 o'clock. Beautiful Monday morning. Hope you're doing well. Hope your weekend was a good one. And uh, if you enjoyed the football game, I'm, I'm glad you did that. Yeah. I'm enjoying talking about it after the fact. Mm-hmm. So it's fun for me to be able to look at the fun stuff. Yeah, it is. <laughs> the stuff that interests me. All right, by the way, we, we totally, absolutely, Robin, so far this morning have neglected a very, very important event that happened yesterday. Do you have any idea what I'm referring to? Oh, yes, I do. What is it? Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day is right. So what happened? All I, right. I didn't so hear we, anything I'll, about it. What happened? Because that was such a hot item on well, this, Friday. This, our first other news story comes from Punxsutawney, uh-huh. which is the home of Punxsutawney Phil, the famous groundhog. Mm-hmm. Who well, apparently is the same groundhog year after year after year. He's an eternal groundhog. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not true, probably. Anyway, anyway uh, he emerged from his hole yesterday and saw his shadow. <laughs> oh, wow. Which indicates six more weeks of winter. Oh, okay. Phil came out of his hole at Gobbler's Knob at 7.20 a.m. yesterday, Groundhog Day, and saw his mm-hmm. shadow. The Punks, okay, the Punks and Tawny Groundhog, the Groundhog Club said on their website. Mm-hmm. A Super Bowl winner, I will not predict, but my weather forecast, you cannot contradict. That's <laughs> not a football lying beside me. It's my shadow, you see, so six more weeks of winter it shall be. Oh, That's the poem that the groundhog wrote. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Phil's all right. He's, he's a great groundhog. A lot of fun. 25,000 people showed up to see this groundhog come out of its hole. That's pretty awesome. 25,000 people. Yeah, major event. They have a parade. That's unbelievable. They, yeah. <laughs> there were 82,000 people at the Super Bowl. 80, <laughs> 82,529 people at the Super Bowl and 25,000 people looking at a groundhog. Wow, so that's like more than 25% of the attendees at the Super Bowl. How far away is the is the the farthest person? Must be way in the back. 
Yeah. Can't see. I mean, the, oh there's probably gosh. a flat ground. Yeah. <laughs> All right, another animal in the news is Bigfoot. I guess you can call it an animal. We're not oh. sure if it's an animal or a Human. humanoid thing. Yeah. Uh, in Litchfield, Maine, two men in Vermont and Maine claim to have seen a white Bigfoot. <laughs> oh, okay. In recent weeks while wa- walking their dogs. <gasps> the report surfaced in Cryptozoology News, a publication that tracks purported sightings of yetis, mermaids, leprechauns, and other mythical creatures. Oh, my gosh. A 20-year-old man in Shaftesbury, Vermont, claims he saw a tall, man-like beast cross the road ahead of him. <laughs> I'm glad oh. I don't live in Vermont. I'd be worried it was me sleepwalking. <laughs> yeah, me. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, that's scary. <laughs> you ever hear of a report in Ocala? It's just it's just me. I got up in the middle of the night, wasn't yeah. thinking. <laughs> walked around in my undies and uh and, yep. and hey, I saw a, your dog. a big white Bigfoot. <laughs> There's a Yeti here <laughs> in our neighborhood. <laughs> Get the gun. Oh my goodness. All right, next story is out of Paris, France. Okay. Robert Marchand. Mm-hmm. A 102-year-old Frenchman who holds the only record for speed cycling by a centenarian has beaten his record. Oh, wow. Marchand cycled 26.952 kilometers, which is 16.7 miles, uh-huh. in an hour on Friday. Oh, gosh. At the French National Track in St. Quentin and Evelines, which is a suburb of Paris. An audience of 300 people cheered him on. So the groundhog gets 25,000 people and a 102-year-old man going 16.7 miles an hour. Uh-huh. Which right? is quicker than us. It's faster than how well we drive. Oh, my goodness, of course. <laughs> he gets 300 He gets 300 people. <laughs> yeah, where's the balance there, you know? <laughs> well, he probably didn't get as much hype as Puxatani fell. No, no hype. That's what it is. Got to do the hype next year for him. <laughs> Next story is out of London, England. British prosecutors. Did I play the music at the beginning of the segment? I can't remember. British I, prosecutors I so. have had... Really? <laughs> oh, prosecutors. I thought you said prostitutes. British prosecutors time. have okay. had second thoughts about bringing criminal charges against three Freegans who oh. <laughs> took food from supermarket trash cans. Freegans. <laughs> what are those? like? Idiots. Yeah. Idiots, okay. Have you ever heard of the freaking idiots? No. Okay, now I have. No, I, <laughs> yeah, I made that up. Idiots. <laughs> I don't know what the heck it means. You're a freaking idiot. A freegan, F-R-E-E-G-A-N. Wow, so they're dumpster divers. They're the ones that want food for free. <laughs> there you go. That makes sense. You're I like my definition my better. Yeah. Uh, the men were arrested last year outside of a branch of the Iceland chain. The Guardian reported the charges only became public Tuesday when the newspaper reported the cash, causing a massive backlash. Wow. Whatever. Yeah. Freegans, whatever a freegan is. Yeah. <laughs> an idiot. It's an idiot, Rob. It's an idiot. It's a freaking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> the next story is from Mechanicsburg, Ohio. Okay. The family of an Ohio man being buried on top of his motorcycle in a transparent casket said the burial plan was made about 18 years ago. Did you see these photos, by the way? No. No, I did not. I, this is the first I've heard the of The family of Mechanicsburg resident Billy Stanley, who died from lung cancer Sunday at the age of 82, and, and it would be a week ago, not yesterday, uh, said the man long ago began making arrangements to be buried in a plexiglass casket while astride his 1967 Harley-Davidson Electric Glide, oh, wow. according to the Dayton Daily News. And I saw photographs of this. The, the deceased man... Mm-hmm. I, I'm assuming he's placed there by a mortician who would know how to do this kind of thing. Yes. He's dressed in leather. Uh-huh. He's sitting on a motorcycle in a plexiglass box uh-huh. with a helmet on. You can see his face. Oh. And he is in the position he would have been were he driving the bike. Uh-huh. And he was lowered into the ground in that plexiglass. Upright. upright uh-huh. Sitting on the motorcycle. Oh. It was so sad for me to see that because the whole family, everybody, you know, there he is. But that's what he wanted. Yeah, and they had to watch him go in the ground. Now that's... I, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, no. It's not, oh, well, my whatever. gosh. All right, next story is out of uh, Hawaii. Wow. Out of Hawaii. Oh, I, I got no time here. Hawaii Jeez. stranded hiker rescued from a Hawaiian mountain. I'll just read you the headline. Oh. All right, we've got to go forward. Uh, Mike Huckabee's morning uh, five-minute piece is coming up, and after that, we'll do News Bites. Deal? Deal.
This is the Huckabee Report for Monday. I'm Mike Huckabee from Santa Rosa Beach, Florida. Immigration reform might not be dead after all. Details next. With a horrible gridlock in Washington, we sometimes ask, what can I do? Well, the answer is to leverage the power of the purse. I try to shop with companies that support liberty, like Diamond Gusset Jeans. Diamond Gusset Jeans are proudly grown and sewn right here in the United States with manufacturing in Blue Ridge, Georgia. Their jeans offer enhanced comfort with a trademark gusset that's placed right in the stride. So buy liberty. Visit their store at gusset.com. That's G-U-S-S-E-T dot com. Does your furnace need repair? Your house need cleaning? Or maybe you're ready to update your kitchen? Big or small, whatever your home improvement need, log on to handyman.homeadvisor.com. HomeAdvisor is a free online resource with instant access to top-rated remodelers, maids, handymen, roofers, and many other home contractors. It's easy and it's free. Just go to handyman.homeadvisor.com, handyman.homeadvisor.com. That's handyman.homeadvisor.com. Most analysts doubted that immigration reform would be brought up this year because nobody wanted to touch that hot potato in an election year. But President Obama just pulled a 180. He's been demanding a quick path to citizenship for about 11 million illegal immigrants. But he suddenly shifted gears and told CNN that he might be willing to compromise with Republicans to grant these people legal status to be in the U.S., but not full citizenship, at least not right away. So immigration reform might be back on the front burner after all. But Latino leaders want that path to citizenship. They vote heavily Democratic.